Yo, what is good, family? We back at it with another top 10 video, man. And I'm going to be talking about my top 10 Denzel Washington movies. It's not ranked. I'm just saying which ones is my top 10. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not going to really rank them because I like all of them. You know what I'm saying? And I also going to put in the honorable mention section, which got five extra ones that's honorable mention in my book. All right? So we going to jump straight into this one y'all let's get it now you already know I, I ain't gonna start off this list without having the Dundada itself one of my all-time favorite is Malcolm X he should have got an Oscar for this movie and he escaped into Malcolm X it's like I wasn't looking at Denzel Washington when he played in this movie I was looking at Malcolm X um, the ensemble was crazy but I ain't gonna get too deep into that. But it's like from it, it it shows you it showed you from the beginning stages of him when he was in the street. Shows you the transition in jail, nation of Islam, the fallout, and then the aftermath of everything that happens after. And uh, it it gave you everything. And Spike Lee did a dope ass job doing it man and I enjoy it I enjoy this movie every time I watch it man you know cause it's like you can go back and look at um, some of Malcolm X interviews and what he was saying and it's like it's no different I still see him you know and he escaped into the role and I really did enjoy this movie man this is another one of my favorites man that he did and it was The Hurricane who he played Ruben Hurricane Carter who got incarcerated on some BS from um, they saying that he shot and killed some people in the bar the whole time it, it wasn't true the whole time the Italian cop was on his heels he didn't like him so he was making sure that he get put in jail um, he also had some folks that helped him out and it was tough but they finally got him out but just the uh, acting in this movie was was crazy man even that scene where he's like by himself and he's talking like to three different parts of himself or was it two it was the sad scared part the side of him that wanted to beat everybody ass <laughs> and um his just neutral self and it was three parts but yet that part right there was like man he made you feel it and even that part when they was like arguing on like how they was gonna help get him out and just that emotion it was like i've been locked up in here for 30 years man this man killed it in this movie man and i enjoy it every time i watch it i really do man man of course man we got to talk about mo better blues mo better blues is one of my all-time favorite movies uh also one of my all-time favorite Spike Lee joints. Um, he played, of course, Bleak Gilliam, who pretty much thought he was a player player. But, brother, he, <laughs> it was just crazy. Of course, he was a dope horn player. The jazz music in here was awesome. Um, the women in here were beautiful and so on and so forth. But, of course, he played the horn dude. He got his lip busted and everything. <laughs> And um, he really did kill it in this movie. He didn't really have to do but so much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yeah, the ensemble in this movie was was crazy, man. And come to find out, I know this was kind of like a comedy drama, which I actually understand now. But yeah, man, I really enjoyed him in this movie, man. This is another one that I picked, man. John Q, man. It's a tearjerker. I had it in the one where it made me cry. A lot, you know what I'm saying? But bruh, he killed it in this movie. And I'm like, why didn't he get an Oscar for this? Or some kind of award for this movie? Because man, come on, dog. He made you feel like cause it's a lot of people that was that probably would have resorted to this. Like, seriously, cause this <laughs> these health joints be crazy. Of course, like the ensemble, Kimberly at least played his wife. Uh, the kid that played his son, he he did dope. You really did like him. And when he was going through what he was going through, you felt every emotion from uh, Denzel in this movie. Even the part like, I'm not going to bury my son. My son is going to bury me. And he was, he would take on, even though the gun was 
the gun wasn't really loaded but it's the fact that like, dog i'm not playing you either give him a heart or you could take my heart and put it in him either way my son is gonna live and that's what he meant he wasn't playing no games out here man. but yeah man i really did enjoy this movie dog i do have to be ready to watch this movie <laughs> Well, if anything, man, I really enjoyed this movie. Man, of course, man. Of course, I'm going to have Training Day on this, man. Training Day is one of my all-time favorites of his, man. You know, I've watched this movie so many times. You know what I'm saying? And he made the character that he played, he made you like him and hate him at the same time until at the end, he actually showed you who he truly was. And it made you come like, God damn. It was like a roller coaster of emotion. Ethan Hawke killed it in this movie. I couldn't really see nobody else really bringing the emotion in this joint that he really did. Because um, I think they had like, who else? Like Eminem or Matt Damon, Tobey Maguire to play it. I'm like, nah, man. I'm glad they went with Ethan Hawke because he definitely killed it. Just the setup from start to finish was crazy. And it happened in, I believe, in one day all of this was going on in one day if i'm not mistaken but probably a couple days i think it was one day no it was a couple days probably like two three days max um but yeah man this movie was dope man i i i'll, I'll still watch this joint to this day the speech alone like come on man but you knew he was nervous at the end like yo jake i need that man but he trying to he trying to remain strong like, I need that, man, you know what I'm saying? But he he, he felt like, yo, they gonna kill me if I don't get this money, man. Like, you can see the emotion after a while on his face. But yeah, man, Denzel killed it in this. And of course, he got an Oscar for this, and I do not shit on that, because he killed it in this role. He should have got an Oscar for other movies that he did, too, but this one was dope. Man on fire, dog. This man was not playing games. When you put Denzel in a movie where he's like straight tunnel vision, I'ma get this person or I'ma save this girl by any means necessary. He is not kidding around, dog. And this movie showed it. When he got in that gunfight with uh, the Colombians, I think they were Colombian, uh, and the police, like, and he got put, he got shot and everything. This man was not playing. He healed and he got to work. You understand me? I seen the first one, the first Man of Fire. They had a Man of Fire before this one that Scott Glenn played in, and I didn't like it. It was trash to me. And he got that little girl back. Yo, I suggest you watch this movie. This was before Equalizer. Yeah, man, this is one of my favorites of his, man. The Book of Eli. This was a surprise, to be honest. Um, When I first watched it, I was just like, dog. This is crazy. Like, I did not expect him to be in a movie like this. Uh, my father did watch it. He didn't like it the first time he watched it. But the second time and the third time, he enjoyed it. This man was on a fucking mission. And he was chopping motherfuckers' heads off left and right. That bar scene? Oh, my God. Like, you are not going to be playing around with this man. And then I believe he was like half blind. He was half blind, I believe, in this movie. And of course, they had the villain played by the great Gary Oldman, who was a dope part of this movie. Uh, his henchman, Ray Stevenson, he was very intimidating in this movie. Um, Miller Kunis was dope in this movie. Um, that's just to name a few. Uh, Tom Waits, who was the... Uh, the guy he traded with, he ain't know Denzel had them hands. <laughs> but this movie was dope, man. And I watched, I, I got this movie on DVD. If I get the movie on DVD, I'm definitely, I definitely enjoyed the movie. But yes, I do have DVDs, people. Just in case streaming go out, I have some shit to watch. Y'all better get with the program. But yeah, man, Book of Eli. Another Spike Lee joint, Inside Man. I really enjoyed this. It's like, it. this is, I can say, one of my favorite bank heist movies. Because it had such a crazy twist at the end on it, man. Like, Clive Owen played a dope-ass leader in this movie. And he was testing Denzel to the fullest extent of his mental stability. And he was, like, going haywire. <laughs> it was a whole lot of shit going on. But he told him, when I get finished, I'm going to walk right out this bank. Denzel thought he was bullshit. 
And what he do? Walk right out the fucking bank. Past him. And he escaped. That that was crazy, man. But yo, I'm telling y'all, if y'all haven't watched this movie yet, I suggest you do. Because this movie was dope. I really enjoyed this one, man. Another dope one I really enjoyed was Devil in a Blue Dress, man. This movie was lit, man. I watch this movie every time I come on. The storyline was the storyline was great. I enjoyed this from start to finish. Don Cheadle came in as his best friend, who was a crazy mug, but he was a dope addition to this movie. This movie had a lot of people in it. it had Tom Sizemore, who like he didn't care how he felt. He was like, you gonna get this done or what? You either gonna die or go to jail. It's one of the two. And it's like he's one of the ones like I did not sign up for this. I did not want to get into this. But it's like he have to do it. And he had to do certain things to actually get himself up out of that. If y'all haven't watched this movie, I suggest you do. This is one of my all-time favorite movies. It's all the easiest though, but yeah. Devil in the Blue Dress. And of course, the Equalizer Trilogy. Now, I'm going to say this. Because I said it to my father and my uncle not too long ago. I enjoyed the first two better than the third one. Now... In my book, he's coming out with two more, a fourth one and a fifth one, which I believe is pretty dope. But I enjoyed the first two better. The second one was my favorite, the most one of my one of the favorites in my book. All of them I believe was dope. It showed different parts of him, but that third one, he was like a little bit more sinister in his killings, because he like, dog, y'all not gonna mess up what I got going here. I'm enjoying these people y'all not gonna mess with these people but the reason why i like the second one the most because it had the best ending to me the first one i felt like that ending him and dude should have gotten to a fist fight because dude was just whooping people ass but it's just like he took him out with the nail gun he had a better fight with his henchman with the with the mustache he had a better fight with him but in the second one when he fucked all them dudes up and he told him like the only thing that I'm gonna regret is that I'll only get to kill y'all kill y'all once. I want to kill y'all twice. <laughs> and they was like, yo, like this. He they underestimated him, and he kicked Pedro uh, uh, Pascal's ass up there. But he was fight. He was going at it in a like I think a hurricane or something. Man, that it was crazy. It was definitely crazy. This one, he just walked the dude down. He, like, he was in the dark. He was, like, moving swiftly through the dark, killing his henchmen. But when he got the dude, he walked him down to his death. And then, of course, the third one brought back him and Dakota Fanning, which I really enjoyed. But I'm ready for the fourth and fifth one. Um, my man is not retiring yet, and I will definitely enjoy these joints that's going to come out. All right, fam, now we about to get into the honorable mentions. I thought I had five, I actually have six. <laughs> I know y'all probably like, damn, six honorable mentions? But yes, man, these joints I still rewatch to this day, man. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. Of course, the classic Remember the Titans. I wore this movie out when it first came out. I watched this movie so much, man. Like, I knew damn near every line in this movie almost. <laughs> like, strong side, left side, strong side, left side. Like, I was here going crazy watching this movie. <laughs> but this had a dope ensemble from, of course, uh, Wood Harris, Ryan Hurst, uh, Donald Faison. He was crazy in this movie. I forgot what dude name is. I think uh, Will something. Will Patton. That's his name. And of course, Sunshine. That's a that was a play that was a football playing white boy, man. You understand what I'm saying? That boy could play some football. This is like my all-time favorite football movie. The next one is like Matter of fact, I'm gonna make that move. I'm gonna make a list like that. My my top 10 football movies. Or oh, it might be a top six or seven. But yeah, man. Remember the Titans is one of my favorites. Another one that I watch a lot is Out of Time. Now, a lot of people I noticed don't really watch this movie like that. And this movie was dope. It's just like the, the ways he had to get out of certain situations was crazy. Sanaa Lathan fine ass was in this movie. Oh, she looked good in this movie. Eva Mendez was in this movie. Um, plus Dean Kane played the crazy boyfriend. It was just like the twists and turns in this movie just had you on the edge of your seat, man. I ain't gonna lie. Even that hotel scene, that was crazy too. 
but I really enjoy watching this movie, man. Flight is another one that I really enjoy, man. The way he flew that plane, he had to flip it upside down to save people. A couple of them died, a couple of them were living. More, I think more survived than actually passed. But he did it drunk. That was crazy. He was fucked up flying that plane, man. And it just shows you the aftermath of the things, the trials and tribulations he had to go through to uh, try to like cope with it. But of course, they got him. Uh, John Goodman was dope in this. He was his right hand man that got him out of the uh, out of the BS. Well, not really, but he put him back into his into his. You know what I'm saying? His Denzel walk, you know, the swagger after he killed that damn bar. Like, if y'all see that scene, this man drunk every liquor bottle out of the bar. I was like, yo, this nigga was so fucked. He walked in there, this man was near the toilet. But John Goodman came in there, he gave him that, that booger sugar. He came out that bitch with the swagger, boy. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to go to court, man. <laughs> Yeah, bro, I really enjoyed this movie, man. Of course, I gotta put Fences up here, man. He he was dope in this movie. He made you hate him. He made you really hate him in this movie. But it also showed how some fathers can actually be. It may, and then, of course, like, his father was real fucked up towards him. And him learning that from his father, he pretty much put that on his son. Is It just goes to show, like, what you get taught from one person you think it's cool to put on another person it's like you have to break out of it but i believe he was really hating on his son and of course you i gotta give flowers to the queen herself viola davis because she killed it in this movie man she killed it in this movie and it was a dope balance you know what I'm saying? Of course, he did some petty shit, had a baby on him. You know what I'm saying? Well, she hit him with that line, like, this baby is not a motherless child, but you a, you a wifeless, you a wifeless man? I was like, damn! That shit <laughs> took all the breath away from that man. Like, oh, that's how you feel? Oh. But it's like, dog, you did all fucked up. And your homie was trying to tell you, man, you better leave that girl alone, man. You got a, you got a nice thing home, man. She take care of you. You know, got to leave that girl alone, man. Of course, he's like, no, I got a hand. Of course, the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. Some of y'all don't even know about this movie. A Soldier Story. This joint was the first time I actually heard him say, get your fucking hands off me. He need to trademark that. He need to trademark that line. Because he delivered he deliver it great. The way he said it, even in glory, yeah, you better get your hands off me, man. And like He was like, man, Morgan Freeman, like, yeah, boy, you want to get that? You better get your fucking hands off of me. Like the way he just said it. <laughs> you know, my Morgan Freeman with Joe Clark, on, let me tell you something, that boy, you better get your hands off of me, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But. Of course. This movie was dope. Adolf Caesar acted his ass off in this movie. I got to give him his flowers, man. Because he played one petty ass motherfucker in this movie. And Denzel got tired of his shit. And he popped his ass. There's only but so much people take, man. That's pretty much the movie, <laughs> to be honest. And we got my boy right here pretty much doing an investigation on what happened. So yeah, man, this, I really did enjoy this movie. I watch this movie every time it come on. And the ensemble was crazy in this. It had everybody in it. From David Allen Greer, um, I think, uh, was Robert Thompson in this too? It was a couple people in this joint. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. And last but not least, I got to give it to Ricochet. John, I, got, I ain't gonna lie, Denzel was dope. But John Litlow, the, when he play a villain in the movie, he is going to kill kill it as a villain and god damn it did he do it in this movie he also did good in cliffhanger too but this man was just diabolical in this motherfucker you understand and it was like a batman and fucking joker type, <laughs> type joy <laughs> it was like <laughs> They were like, man, I'm, I'm going to get this motherfucker. I, I've been planning for 10 years to get this motherfucker. And 
he watching him on there get his accolades for kidnapping him and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, okay. I got a lot of time to plan. Of course, he escaped. And the shit hit the fan, man. Bars. Yeah, man, I really enjoyed this movie a lot, man. I can't even hold you. Um, but that's it, y'all. That's my honorable mentions. Let me know what y'all thought of the top 10 and the honorable mentions. Um, I know a lot of people gonna be like, why you didn't have American Gangster in it? I will put that in another... I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna actually make another top 10 movies that I didn't like. American Gangster is one of them. I'm not even going front with y'all. I will explain why I didn't like it in the top 10 that I movies that I didn't like. But yeah, I will get to that another time. But yeah, man, if y'all enjoyed this, man, and got to the end of the video, I appreciate y'all to the fullest. Let me know down in the comment sections who a couple of y'all uh, favorite Denzel Washington movies. Um, share the video and also subscribe to the channel for your boy. The next one I'm going to do will be my top 10 chat with Bozeman. I did say Spike Lee at first, but I might do both. But y'all let me know. Y'all want to see the Spike Lee or Chadwick Boseman top 10 because that I like, I like doing these. <laughs> but yeah, I'll see y'all in the next one, y'all. Peace, love, blessings. We out this peace.